And now for something completely different. So when Battlestate drops a trailer for an upcoming patch, you know shit's about to get real. But before we get into it, the current patch notes are only preliminary and will possibly change in the near future. Maybe something else will get added, maybe not, perhaps something will get removed. But I'm not gonna jump to early conclusions as to how certain things can and will impact the gameplay, but rather discuss everything from my own perspective. Now, first and foremost, a seemingly big change is coming to customs. The first CAV boss is to be implemented in 0.9 update. The Dealmaker. His leadership skills allow him to easily put together a posse of former factory workers. Well armed, they continue to force their own rules in Tarkov. The Dealmaker prefers to avoid fair fights, quickly retreating to a safe place and leaving his guys to deal with the enemy. Pussy. Also, it is not certain that he will appear in customs every single raid. Look at this dude. All natural beauty. I think that smile is permanent. But that sexy animation though. From what I've heard, he's gonna be patrolling near the gas station in dorms, and the trailer shows him at exactly those locations. So if you think about it, it kinda makes sense. Yet it raises more questions like, will the east spawn or boiler side have a much better chance of rushing? However, as it's yet to be seen how will the boss act during firefights, and how exactly will his so-called leadership skills play out, I hope that him patrolling that area will make perfect sense. One thing that came to my mind though, is introduction of a certain type of daily tasks. What if we were able to complete a certain amount of daily tasks, maybe gather some intel from the traders in return, you know, a little Bertolby type of deals, nothing too complicated, and as a reward, the chance for the dealmaker spawning upon finishing those tasks would increase. Because when the patch goes live, everyone is going to jump in on customs and hunt this bad boy, myself included, so maybe not this very patch, though this type of content could potentially open more gameplay possibilities. And while we are on the subject, the wipe in the upcoming patch will be partial. I'm sure that you're already aware of this, but it doesn't hurt to mention it once more, meaning that the earned reputation of traders will be saved. In my opinion, a great way to incentivize the community and put an emphasis on some other, new additions that are coming with the patch. We will still have to level our character from the ground up and maybe see some changes in the skill system, scaling of certain skills to be precise. And with this in mind, I only assume that the task will not reset, cause it will be painful to go through all of them yet again, so we can either work on some active ones, or check out what's new, as the patch will also include 5 new quests for the mechanic, 4 for Ragman, and 5 for Skier, which could be very interesting. Other map related changes include new containers and new loot locations on woods, customs and factory, as well as adjusted loot spawn chances on all maps. Trader-wise, various prices of weapons, grenades and attachments will be rebalanced, increased penetration of SP5 and SP6 rounds, internal size of the ammo cases increased to 6x6 six six slots, and another, quite important change in my opinion, reduced mouse sensitivity when aiming through long-range scopes. The introduction of new types of grenades could potentially be a huge game-changer. Both smoke grenades and flashbangs are a welcome addition to Escape from Tarkov. They will allow for a more versatile approach in a number of situations, from diversion and luring, giving you concealment when the going gets tough, and most importantly, I hope for a much more efficient room clearing. And the cabin on Shoreland is a very good example of how flashbangs will make these encounters easier. Whereas now, if you have a squad camping upstairs, the odds are against you, and it can be pretty hard to do it successfully. Going forward, I can't wait for the different options of opening doors to be implemented. Now that is gonna be something. So you sneak up, slowly open a door and toss a flashbang inside, and then you breach and clear the room. Are you tired of constantly having to look around for your teammates? Hold back in firefights because you don't want to penetrate them with bullets. Well, look no further. Who says a simple piece of cloth can make a difference? Choose between 5 colors that best suit your personality. We have red, green, yellow, blue and white. Are you a loyal companion to your squadmates? 
then green is just the right color for you. Get one for just 99.99 rubles or all five for 489.99 and save up practically nothing. Cloth Bands, your squadmate's squadmate's new best friend. Identifying your squadmates is also going to be easier with the upcoming color armbands. Nothing too fancy, pretty standard stuff, but we'll be able to choose from 5 different colors and thus tell the difference between friend or foe a bit quicker. Though I am wondering how it will work if every single player in the raid decides to wear a blue armband for example. After all it's not designed to fully enable you to let your guard down, only to make it a bit easier to tell who's who. There's no denying that occasional friendly fire will happen, but I'm sure that more experienced squads will benefit from this immensely. I do have another idea of how to alleviate the potential problem, or rather how to simplify it. See, established clans, or groups, or squads, or however you want to call them, play a big part in Escape from Tarkov. So if clan customization of some sort ever gets implemented, the armbands could be a part of this by having custom colors and a custom logo of a particular clan. Not saying that basic colors should be out of the picture, but having something like this, maybe even the logo on the helmet could be a possible solution. Or maybe to take it a step further, spray cans to paint weapons and gear. Anyhow, we'll see how it plays out first. Moving on, so far we have two confirmed weapons. Glock 18C, a fully automatic 9x19 pistol, and the DS Arms SA-58, a 7.62x51 battle rifle, and a variant of the FNFL. The introduction of battle rifles in Tarkov is without a doubt a great thing, and having a fully automatic rifle with that caliber is, well, gonna be dope. There's already a number of attachments for the SA-58 in the patch notes, barrels, muzzle attachments, receivers and a foldable sock adapter. The recoil and the kickback both seem pretty well done, considering that it's a big caliber rifle, but just a few more weeks and we'll get to test it. I mean sure, I'm a big fan of weapon assortment in Tarkov, however it's not what I look forward to the most in the upcoming update. Before we get to that, let's have a look at some more equipment and weapon attachments. EOTech Voodoo 6x Scope, as well as the Burst Tac 30, always good to have a variety of mid-range optics. Arma Sight Vulcan MG Bravo 3.5 Night Scope, and from this we can see that it's much better than the only Night Scope currently available in the game, or the NSPUM. We are also getting the Holosun Reflex Sight, which also features a laser sight, so ergonomically speaking, this could be very useful. The SKS is also getting the new Tapco stock, and not that it was required, but we'll finally be able to attach a grip on the SKS. Equipment wise, we have a few variants of the IOTV 4th generation body armor, or the improved outer tactical vest, and with this armor designed to permit maximum freedom of movement, I imagine it's gonna be very close to the 6B43, but with a bit less movement penalty as well as protection. And a tactical beta 2 combat pack, cause obviously one can never get enough backpacks to put inside backpacks to put inside backpacks, and this one looks pretty cool. And judging by the size of it, it could have approximately the same space as the tricep. And here we can also spot the new boonie hat. Cool! And now, two items that raise the most questions, the almighty GP5 gas mask, but as radiation and stuff like that is currently not in the game, I think it's safe to assume that it will be purely cosmetic, at least for the time being. Nonetheless, this is probably the best thing in this patch. It's not that I don't like the rest of the stuff, it's just that this, this is pure gold. So the next step is to add climbing on bathroom walls. <laughs> and the other thing is this thing. The DefTac Ronin Tactical Ballistic Helmet. Now I found some info about this helmet, and apparently it can stop a 357 and 44 Magnum rounds, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this will affect the armor meta, and I am very curious about the price of it, and whether or not it will have an impact on prices of other helmets like Halton, Fast MT, and the diaper helmet. But on top of everything, it simply looks awesome. It's like Iron Man and the Stormtrooper had a helmet baby. We can also see that scavs are getting some new clothes, as well as another mask. However, I remember during one of the podcasts, they did say that this mask will be purely cosmetic and will offer no ballistic protection whatsoever. But one more thing I noticed in the trailer is the fact that scavs are armed with some pimped out AKs. You know, at least in comparison with their usual loadouts. I do not know if this is intended to represent some kind of a scav loadout buff, if the personal crew of the dealmaker is going to have better weapons, or if this was shown simply to put an emphasis on the cinematic part of the trailer itself. 
And finally, what we've all been waiting for is of course better performance and an improved anti-cheat system. As the patch notes state, we can expect freezes and stuttering to be fixed, optimization of the graphical and functional component, improved behavior in individual AI enemies, and these things are exactly what I'm looking forward to the most. To be honest, the pressure is rising with each patch and sometimes the impatience of the community can be misinterpreted, but at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. A unique, optimized and fun experience. So we'll see what update 0.9 brings in regards to those issues and until next time, thank you for watching. Hey quick folks, come over and put a coin in the eggplant. The